This week, preserving people during life and after death, the digital legacy that you leave behind, and lots of freezers. the streets of San Francisco. Mecca for technology innovators and aficionados. A destination where the cult of geek reigns supreme. Everyone's got that billion dollar idea here and everyone wants to save the world. The ethos, nothing is impossible, runs through the veins and the Twitter feeds of every 20-something Zuckerberg wannabe. Now, Silicon Valley is taking on life's biggest challenge, death. Dave Lee has been looking at how Silicon Valley is trying to help us all live longer. This will be my last meal for 36 hours. Like a growing number of people in Silicon Valley, I'm about to try fasting, something some here believe could contribute to extending our lifespan. My advice to you, um, just sleep in really late so you don't, <laughs> so you don't have to deal with it. Kristen Brown is a biotechnology journalist. She tells me living longer is becoming something of an obsession for many techies. We do tend to see people not just thinking of the body as a machine, but talking about it metaphorically as a machine. Are they actually making any progress? It's growing so quickly right now. I mean, we understand so much more this year than we did last year even. But the other thing about science is the more questions you answer, the more questions there are. The following morning, my first stop after a skipped breakfast was Jeffrey Wu. He's chief executive of a firm called Human. It promotes fasting as a way to boost productivity and increase our health span. That is, the number of years you are fully able before the troubles of old age. Jeffrey promotes the 36-hour fast that I'm on, and his company sells products they claim will boost your body's reaction to fasting. So when you're extending beyond a 24-hour fast, you're dipping into a metabolic state called ketosis, which converts your stored body fat into a really efficient source of energy called ketone bodies. As one gets better at being in ketosis, uh, cognitive clarity and in, 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 in what ends up being a productivity boost. To test it, we measured the ketone level in my body with a simple blood test. My ketone levels were low, as could be expected, but next I drank one of humans' ketone-producing products. You can expect to see within 15 minutes um, equivalent to you know, five, seven days worth of fasting level wow. ketones in your system. The science behind what benefits can be had isn't exactly watertight. One study suggested one of humans' other products may not have any greater effect than a cup of coffee. The moment of truth for me came around 30 minutes later. Wow. 2.2. OK. So it's essentially equivalent to having fasted for three, four days wow. in uh, 30 minutes. The obsession with rejuvenation and longevity here has even been satirized on HBO's Silicon Valley. It's my transfusion associate. Like all Would great you? comedy, it's funny because it's true. One incredible idea being tested here can be traced back to this man, Paul Burt. In the mid-1800s, he claimed that if you took an old mouse and literally stitched it together with a young mouse, the old mouse would become more agile, have a better memory, and also heal more quickly once it had the young blood flowing through its veins. Now, of course, we can't start stitching humans together, but there is a startup that thinks it can do the next best thing. Alkahest is a California-based startup that believes weekly injections of blood plasma from young people could fight the onset of Alzheimer's. We treated these patients once a week for four weeks with one unit of plasma. And we found that the treatment was safe. And very importantly, although it was a short study to see learning and memory improvements, but it was good enough to see some uh, near-term improvements. 
The team said it found those treated were more capable of basic daily tasks and more aware of their surroundings. Encouraging, but far from conclusive. So far, it's only been proven that this technique works with mice, but it's hoped that extensive human studies might help this team unlock the secret to easily rejuvenating humans. Ultimately, we might be able to identify agents that could be administered orally. To gather this data, they have set up a partnership to get the blood plasma from Griffles, a major pharmaceutical firm based in Spain. People are being paid to give up their young blood. Well, that's a, that's a fascinating ethical question. I actually think that um, you know, there is a large pool of donors currently, which is increasing, and I think there is an increasing recognition how valuable plasma proteins are. To get some answers on whether or not these fantastical ideas could actually work, I went to visit one of the world's foremost experts on ageing. Fasting elicits a response in your body that triggers a protection against many of the diseases that are associated with ageing. And so there's growing realization that multiple forms of fasting might actually be beneficial in the long term. One of the more perhaps outrageous ideas is that you can transfer young blood into an older person and that will rejuvenate and slow the aging process. Is that true? First, let's talk about the science in, in mice. Uh, it is actually amazing work. The science is really strong. Now, taking this and bringing it to humans is, is a completely different story. So the idea, for example, that one would take human plasma or human plasma product and give it to humans to prevent aging is, in my opinion, lunacy. Finally, my 36 hours were up. I'm not sure it's worth it. The lows I had last night and this morning were awful, and to do that regularly, I think, might lead to a longer life, but it certainly wouldn't be a happier one. What could be really interesting, though, is if these companies can recreate the positive effects of fasting without the hard work of having to go without food for such a long period of time. But for now, I think I'm going to choose breakfast. Thank <laughs> you.